Hi, I'm Ross Jacobs, and this is my pony mare, Chops. Chops is about 13, 3, and she's roughly around 30 years old, um, might be 29. Um, so, and I've had her since she was about a yearling. Uh, people sometimes ask me, how did she get the name Chops? I have a bit of a reputation for giving my horses unusual names. But Chops got her name because um, I got a phone call one day uh, from a far farrier down in Gippsland. And he asked um, if I was interested in studying her for, for him. And I sort of said, yeah, bring her in. He said she was three years old and he wanted her started. And he was in his 60s and this was going to be his last horse and he wanted a good job done. So I said, bring her over. And about three weeks later, she arrived on a transport truck. <clears throat> and um, she came off the truck, the owner wasn't even there. She came off the truck and I thought, this is not a three-year-old horse. Um, and I got the next day, I got the dentist out to confirm my suspicions. And I always get the dentist to check horses when I'm going to start them anyway. Um, and he looked at her and he said, oh, she's about 13 months. So I called up the owner and said, look, I'm not starting her, she's way too young. And he said, well, do some groundwork with her if you would, and then send her home. And I said, fine. And I spent about two or three weeks doing groundwork with her. And he said, um, I called him and said, she's doing great. Do you want to come and pick her up? And he said, well, can you put her on a truck? And I said, not until you've paid me. So I um, said, he said that he'd put a check in the mail and I waited. You've got a niche there, haven't you? And I waited and waited and I got, no, I got no check and so I rang him up and he said, oh, I forgot and it's coming. He said, and I said, well, you've got 10 days. And he said, okay, and no check arrived. And he said again, I rang him and he said, um, oh, that's right, I rang him again and they'd moved. There was no, new people had picked up the phone and they said, oh no, they left. They've gone to another town. So. I tracked them down and he said, oh yeah, we've been so busy, I couldn't, for, I, <coughs> I forgot about it, I was getting around to it. And I said, well, I'm not, you're not getting your horse back till you pay me. And if you don't pay me, um, I'm putting, sending it to the sale yard. So he said, no, 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 don't do that. I love her, it's gonna be my last horse. Please don't do that, I'll, I'll send you the money. So I waited two weeks and nothing. And so I left them a phone message saying the horse was going to the sale yard. I put an ad in the paper because that I was seizing the horse for undue um, fees, uh, sorry, unpaid fees. And um, it was going to the sale yard and he had 14 days to respond. And I never heard from them. So what I then did was I, s I sent him a another message on his phone and said that I'd sold the horse and he only owed me th like three or four hundred dollars. But I, on the message I said I, um, I'd sold her for five thousand dollars and I, th I thanked him for the tip and hung up and I never heard from them. So I kept her because I've never sold a horse in my life and she became one of the best horses ever super sensitive she's like riding a ferrari and people used to say to me you're a professional horseman you're six foot tall and you're riding a pony why don't you ride a real horse and i'd say to them if you don't think she's a real horse if you think she's just a little pony you get on and ride her she's no pony and i love her to death but the point of this video was I wanted to relate a couple of stories. Where is your it's? Why haven't I got taken care of it yet? Where are you hiding it? You just can't get enough, can you? I wanted to relate a couple of stories about trust. Um, that And six exemplifies this. So I was breaking her in. She's about three and a half, I think. And she'd had about three rides and in the round yard and I was going to take her down the road. We lived on a very quiet dirt road. No one went down there. It was almost impassable except for horseback or four wheel drive. And we'd had some rain, so there was a lot of puddles and mud on the road. And it was perfect for taking horses out on first rides. So I took her down and we, she was doing all right 
for a while and then um, we hit where there were some pretty decent sized puddles. And I thought, you know, this would be fine. They're not too big, but they're good. So I thought, well, let's introduce her to some puddles. And um, at first she wanted to go to the side. She wanted to go right and then she wanted to go left. And I just blocked that and just didn't ask her to go forward and through the puddle. Just stopped when she wanted to move her feet that way or move her feet that way or she got distracted over there or over there. I just pick up a rein and say, hey, center your thoughts over here towards the puddle. And we must have stood there for about 10 minutes while I just did that. And then she um, made a try and she stepped forward into the puddle and boom, down she went. It was a sinkhole, a mud hole and she went down up to her chest scramble 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 i came off the side and she scrambled around and eventually got out and i thought oh my god i've wrecked her i've i've betrayed her and now i've got a problem and she's upset and stuff so anyway i decided we'll continue the ride for a bit and she was doing great and then we came across another puddle and it looked a lot, it looked safe. I could see the bottom of it. It wasn't huge. And I thought, I'll try. What, what have I got to lose? So I asked her to go through the puddle, just kept her nose in front of it, and she walked straight through without hesitation. And all my buttons flew off my shirt because my, I was so proud, my chest just burst. I was so proud and so happy that she gave that try and that she trusted me after I had done that terrible thing to her. And so I knew at that point that she was a keeper for life. And that's how it's been. But then several years later, I made a big screw up and I've never forgiven myself for it. And it's, I've always felt terrible and guilty about it. So I had been working her to, I'd been using her when I'd start other horses. I'd ride her in the round pen or the arena and <clears throat> have the uh, horse I was starting either on the lead rope or at liberty and directing it with a flag and stuff. Anyway, we had this really strong minded quarter horse in for training. And um, he was, my body was getting sore with this horse. He kept pulling and pushing. And I thought, well, chops can take some of the load for me. So. I rode her in the round pen with this horse and he didn't want to move. He was stuck. I mean, he was really set in concrete. So, oh, get off. So I got Chops, started to ask Chops to go towards him and I started flagging him and Chops was doing fine. And I, as I got closer to him, I got bigger and bigger with the flag. And it was a terrible mistake. I really screwed up because what happened was that he then got cranky. And he turned around and he charged at Chops. He really charged it, scared the hell out of her. She hightailed it around 180 degrees and head for the fence. <clears throat> she was going to get out of there. And I'm, I'm riding her, trying to control her and flagging him to get off her at the same time. And it was a big mess. And I've always felt terrible about that because it killed her confidence. After that, she was always much more hesitant about working other horses in the round pen. And I betrayed her trust. I did that to her. And it's always played on my mind. But she continued to be a super horse and one I've always loved. And she's retired now. A couple of years ago, she had an accident and uh, damaged her right eye. And uh, we tried to save it, but after, I don't know, two months maybe, we we decided we weren't getting anywhere and we and she was so uncomfortable so we had the eye removed um, and she's getting along fine it's not like it's a problem for her but it it bothers me all the time it freaks me out actually to see her without her eye if I bring her over here you'll be able to see you can see that she's lost that eye um, but she does she does great and gets along fine She's still her old self and bosses all the younger ones around. And so anyway, so that's the story about chops and that's the story about be careful about never betraying your horse, so horse's trust. It's a really important thing. It's hard to do sometimes, um, um, but you know, they deserve better from us. Until next time, good night, Alice.